U.S. Senate. Okay. All right. Well, um, I'm sure we've got a group that may have a little bit of insight on that. We're going to head over to Bram Resnick and our political insiders and see what they're talking about right now. Hey, guys. Yeah, I want to talk about President Trump and the U.S. Senate race here in Arizona. President Trump was out here two weeks ago. This race is now a toss-up. It was a toss-up before he arrived. Did the president have any impact? Did he move the needle at all for Martha McSally, despite what the polls tell us? Uh, well, I think he did originally, but then I think over the past week, week and a half, he's actually become unpopular again. I think he lost focus on his, his conversation around the economy, which is actually a winning message for the Republicans. And somehow he got off on this you know, tangent about the invasion and immigration. So I think he actually then pulled back again. And that's why, from everything I've heard, he did not come to Arizona because he was told by many people in the GOP not to come back to Arizona again. Okay, Chris Herring, was he told not to come back and did he have any impact here as we've seen, we've seen him have an impact in other states, but it doesn't appear to have worked here. No, he was not told not to come back um, and he definitely helped with turnout. Um, I mean, we saw that when he came out, there was definitely a bump um, in Republican turnout. Um, there's a lot of voters in the Republican Party and independents and even Democrats that like what they see from the president, especially on the economy. Um, this is the healthiest the economy has been um, since Reagan, maybe even in my lifetime. So um, there's a lot of voters that like that and see it. And he definitely helped by coming out. Um, there, there's no question about it. And yet, toward the end, uh, the president's message got harsher, more focused on immigration. Uh, there's a controversial ad his campaign produced that was targeted at Arizona and Florida on Facebook. Did that hurt at all with Republican voters or independents in this Senate race? It, it, it might have affected some independents, but, you know, you have to look at how firm these voters were to begin with. Were they on the fence already and they weren't sure where they were going? And those kind of things can impact those voters on either side. So you don't know, were they a little bit unsure and that pushes them toward McSally or were they unsure and it pushes them away? The one thing something like the president's visit does is it really, really does mobilize the, va the base. It energizes them. There's been so much talk about the, the blue wave, about the role of the Democrats, about we're coming for you kind of thing, that when the president comes out, he, he strengthens the base and removes some of that feeling of we don't have our own power and makes them feel more confident to go forward. And I think that that makes a huge difference when you're talking about canvassing, phone calling, talking to your friends and neighbors, the kind of things that really do make an impact. Now, I wonder if that also energizes the Democratic base when you see the president sending troops to the border in these final weeks, airing that ad, mm -hmm. you know, broadcasting that ad. Does it have the, you know, also an effect that gets the Democratic base out? I mean, I would say that we've been mobilizing. Those types of ads are not any kind of surprise. I mean, did you see what he ran on as president? Like, it's fear tactics. That is what they are using to mobilize their base. But in reality, we need candidates who run on courage and who run on hope and things that people actually need, not fear mongering like we're seeing. And so right now, this race is tied according to the polls. You want to respond? Yeah. Uh, hope doesn't pay the bills. We got hope with Barack Obama and we got a recession that rivaled the Great Depression. Yeah. <laughs> no Jobs, no, the hold on. Jobs paid years. the bills. It was, so, it was so bad <laughs> under Barack Obama that even nonpartisan observers said, man, the economy's never going to break 3% GDP. And now we've got the lowest unemployment in the century. And now we've got the lowest unemployment in the century. We've got an economy that is humming. We've got new trade deals. We've got NAFTA renegotiated. We've got the Pacific trade reopened. We've got countries coming back to the table who we were being told they were going to stomp the U.S. economy for decades to come. This has been a phenomenal job, and you don't run a country on hope and change. You run a country on a strong economy, a strong and national fence, and strong and trade deals. Really and attacking people. people. <laughs> let's, 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 let's backtrack here. George Bush left his country in shambles. Okay, let's Bra talk let me about finish. He finished. Okay. okay. Finished. No, no, he started. Well, let me finish. Let's go back let to Carter. Okay, what's this? What, you want statute of limitations here? Let let's, 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 yeah. Chad, Barack have, Obama turned say. the economy around. It grew. It didn't grow as fast as it's growing right now because he came out of a recession. The biggest recession that was ever seen in this country since the Great Depression. He turned it around. Talking about GDP, saying it never hit 3% is not true. He, he turned this economy around. There's no doubt about that. There's no way you can argue against that fact. And quite frankly, 
not much has been done by Donald Trump. He hasn't done much legislatively. He's actually enacted tariffs. They're actually hurting a lot of industries now, including farmers throughout the Midwest and steel. There's a lot of things that are about to come down the pike here. We're riding the economy that was built in the last couple of years of Obama. So you, just clarify. You're, you're saying the same thing you've been saying for two years. It's about to drop. The sh other shoe's about to drop. The economy's about to tank. I'm sorry. This is a fantastic economy. It it's great for the everyday that. American. I don't disagree with that. Okay. Let's, let's, let's talk about let's where we are right now. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about where we are right now. Because we could go back and, and litigate past presidents over 200 years. But where we are right now is an economy that is booming, that we are hitting 4%. Wages are up. Unemployment is at record lows. Things are better. That is hope. That does give hope. But you have to talk sometimes about the things that are wrong, that do need to change. And villainizing people goes both ways. You can say he's villainizing people, but then you villainize the people who support him. And that Why would you support someone who villainizes other people because who are brown? So much that doesn't make it. sense. Oh, it's so, it's so not that. It's no. so not that. And if you want to put that into that category, and if you want to take everything and make it about race, well, I mean, you I'm, a do I'm a Docker. I'm a Docker recipient, and he that, attacked but me. I don't think that's so what we need to talk I want, about. Okay, let's but have I do think that is what we need Bellin. to talk about. Let's I be do. fair. He, he well, put let's a let's deal on the table for DACA, and the Democrats didn't even want to sniff it. Martha McSally no, put something on the table it. that would have fixed it DACA. No, he used it as a hard string Let's let Bellin have the last word. Go ahead. No, he did not use anything to help us. If anything, he put Jeff Sessions on a podium to end the program because he couldn't do it himself because his base was pushing him to do it. And then he wringled around, oh, we need a wall if you want this deal. That is not trying to save anyone, because if you try to save someone, you would never end the program in the first place. Okay, and we're gonna have to end it there. <laughs> President Trump having a big impact on our panel, if not on the Senate race. <laughs>